Okay, hi. So I hope you enjoyed my introduction. So now we're gonna go straight into some definitions, and it's um, the derivative of a vector function of one variable. Like I said, right now we're gonna stick into one variable, and as I said, just now the variable most of the time would be um, said as parameter. So variable and parameters, quite right now, it seems to be quite interchangeable. But um, I, I hope you do understand when I use each word. Okay, so we will define as a, a vector function. Okay, it's um, f. Okay, f. We normally say f as t. Okay, so let's just say you know, for example, f equals to let's just uh, pull one example, which is cosine t i plus two t k plus e to the power of t k. Okay, so when the parameter is t over here, now we just simply pick a value for t, we put it inside there, evaluate all these things, and we get the function. So for example, uh, f, um, vector function f, we let t equals to pi, we will get uh, cosine pi would be minus i plus 2 pi squared j plus e to the power of pi k. And so that is our um, vector function. Okay? Now, uh, just, let's just get some terms uh, together. So if we, to just write a general form, it would be vector function f, parameter t equals to, and this is what we write, okay? Um, x, uh, it's a function of x in, term, uh, with, in terms of t, and that will determine the i component, y, t, j component, z, t, k component. Now, why do we use x, y, and z? Well, because we always kind of uh, draw a parallel with the, the x-axis with the i, uh, I component axis, y and j, z and k. But it's just basically to um, distinguish the different functions. You know, this, like, over here, this can be a different function altogether. You know, these three are not going to be the same. The parameter is the same, but the function is different. That's why we just use x, y and z. Okay, and after that, okay, we will, right now I will just show you the definition, but I'll show you the, the explanation later. Okay, we will think that differentiate um, vector function f in terms of t, we will get simply as the diff, uh, deriv we will just have to differentiate each of the vector components with respect to t accordingly. So we will get something like that. Differentiate z with respect to t. Okay. Okay, what is the interpretation later? Uh, just uh, wait another three minutes. Uh, you get it soon. So we go from here to here. Okay. Now this can only happen under one condition. Okay, and that is each of these functions are you can differentiate each of these functions with respect to t. Now in order for that to happen, uh, they all must be continuous. So that having said that, let's just say we got a vector function k with the same parameter. Okay. Back to function k with the same parameter, but it's now defined as mm. oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. Modulus i, modulus uh, i, and t squared k. So we got a bit of a problem here because you see, as with uh, single variable calculus, if you want to um, interpret it. The, the differential at a certain point that the curve needs to be continuous at that point. So this can only happen if you can differentiate all of this accordingly, right? And when you evaluate it, the whole um, each of these component vectors must be continuous at that point. So if we got something like this, when we go to uh, differentiate k uh, with respect to t, we got a problem because uh, of the modulus t. Uh, modulus t, I, I'm not too sure what's the proof of it, but when t equals to zero, you can't take the modulus. Okay, sorry, not that you can't take the modulus, you can't differentiate um, at that point, right? Because the curve is like that, you don't know what the, the, the function is. So, basically, that is what it means. That in order to go from here to here, all these component uh, functions must be, uh, you, you must be able to differentiate, differentiate it. They are differentiable, okay? Last thing is that sometimes, don't be surprised 
that when you go from here to here, you will lose one of the components. That is perfectly fine. Okay, just like how you lose certain uh, num digits or certain uh, terms, coefficients when you differentiate single variable calculus. This is what I mean. So we got T three I plus um, T J plus Z. Okay, go from here to here. Okay, three uh, T squared I plus J. That's it. Z, you lose out Z because that is only a constant term. So you differentiate with respect to T, you get zero. That is perfectly fine. That's how it works. Okay. So basically, you just lose that component. Like that's how that's how the thing goes. So right now we will move swiftly into into the interpretation. Okay, which will be the more interesting part. And I hope that we can concentrate. Okay. First, let's uh, kind of see what this really means. Okay. You know, doing mathematics for a long time, I mean, not, not as long as professors uh, I mean, long time relatively to, to my life I always believe it's best that we know what each component means Okay, so we got something like this and you know, we, are, we may be a bit puzzled as to what it means, right? Or not that clear But let's, since you know, this is the foundation, let's just make it clear Okay, this is the component axis, okay? I, G, and K This means that we will get a vector the vector f, when we put in the parameter t, uh, number inside t, t equals to a certain number, we get a vector. That vector will go from the origin out to a certain point here. Okay? So let's just say t equals to 0. Okay, uh, yeah, t equals 0. You put t equals to 0 here, you evaluate, you evaluate each of the component functions, and then you get something here. Okay? This, and then yeah, you get the IGK, then this is the vector. You let t equals to 1, you get the vector here. t equals to 1. t equals to 2, let's just say the vector here. So, if you look at it, this is somehow like an arrow from the origin, and you pivot it around. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, t equals to 0, the, the vector goes up from here to here, right? And then as you change the value of t, the vector f would pivot around uh, with the anchor, the origin, so it just pivot around here. So you let t equals, t, let's just say the t is defined as to um, 10, you know, you take every single value of t, you put it inside here, you get the vector, you move the vector around, and then you would get, uh, most logically thinking, a curve. Okay covers all the points okay you get this curve here and this curve sometimes it can be called the trajectory just some uh, good information the tra trajectory you get a curve like that so this is what this thing means now okay I hope that's clear okay so basically you know just think about it as it sweeps out a curve the vector sweeps out a curve so now we need to kind of interpret what the derivative of that means.